Hello everybody, welcome to this episode of Turbo Shed. And whilst we're on coronavirus lockdown, we thought we may as well do some upgrades. In this episode, we're going to make some adjustable rear lower arms so we can get the camber out of the rear wheels. So this is my Japanese Slant Level Pro and if you can see on the back here, I bought this when I lived in Japan and these are pretty useful tools. So you can just lay it against the rim in the center there and we can adjust this until we get the bubble in the center and that gives us our reading. So currently we're running 2.5 degrees in at the top, negative camber, um, and we've now got 265 tyres on 9.5J rims, and that 2.5 degrees across the width of the wheel gives us over 10 millimetres of difference in height between the inside and outside of the tread. And that's no good for two reasons. The first one is that you don't have the full tyre tread on the ground, and the second one is that it runs the inside edges off. Now obviously the car's just sat it is, is here. Um, when the car squats that gets even worse. So usually for drifting and for drag and for traction and everything else you want maybe quarter to half a degree of toe, uh, uh, sorry, of camber out, positive camber on the rear wheels when it's sat like this. So when the car squats they go perfectly straight and that gives good even tyre wear and maximum footprint onto the track. So on the Lexus that is not adjustable with the arms that we've got. I can't adjust it far enough out and the bolts are seized up in this. I know they are. So this is going to be a nightmare to get those out. But once they are, I'm going to make some adjustable arms and then we'll be able to adjust the toe and the camber um, to whatever we want. So let's get some wheels off and uh, try and get these suspension arms out. So first job, slacking the wheels off. Before we jack it up, get the jack under and we'll get the car in the air. You can see we've got the heavy duty axe that stands ready here. Get those in place, get that sorted out and then we can take the wheels off. And as always, it's always good practice in this situation. Although we've got axle stands and the jack, always put the wheels under the car as well for a bit of extra security. So this is the rear suspension. And these are the links that we made previously, uh, the tie bars, which you might remember, um, and the drop links. So they're all okay. And um, the ones we need to sort out are this link here, because this is a fixed link, and we need to be able to adjust that to change the camber. And it's bolted on here, and those bolts are usually completely stuck in. And it goes into one here on the bottom arm which you can just about see. So we need to take this link off and we need to make it adjustable and rose joint this end of it. Easy. So at this point I thought I'd foolishly try and undo the bolts and when that snapped I managed to smash my fingers into the brake disc and remembered why I shouldn't have tried that in the first place. So plan B. Yes, out comes the electric hacksaw and these bolts are hardened and they're 30 years old and God knows what they're made out of, but they're tough. So you've got to grind it and then you grind it some more and then you keep grinding. And what you're trying to do is to get the big thick washer off. There we go. That goes off once the head's off and then we can have a go at the other side which is more of the same. Grind it, get the big thick washer off and then that sets the bolt head flat with the mounts and you can bend the mount slightly and pop the arm out. Now that's the theory. There we are, that's the inner end sorted and now we can deal with the outer. There's just a single nut you need to take off 
that holds in uh, the taper joint for the outer end of the arm. So after a little bit of work you can usually get the nuts off those. And then it's just a case of using the special service tool that Lexus provide. Here we are, the two pound service tool. A couple of good wax on there. Job done, tapers apart and we can get on the bench. Well, here's one of the, um, the lower arms from the Lexus. Uh, they are a nightmare to get out, as you've seen, because this bolt always seizes in that bush. And the only way to get it out is to cut it out with the grinder. Um, as you can see, I've done here, the bolt is still stuck in the bush. So obviously these are non-adjustable. We have um, a ball joint with a taper on the end here that goes into the outer end and the inner end has got this rubber bush. Um, they are adjustable on uh, concentric washers, but that doesn't give you enough adjustment because we've lowered the car so much. So what do we do about that? Well, the simple thing is left hand thread rose joint, right hand thread rose joint. These are M14, bit of tube. And I've already got these bushes that I made ages ago. So simply one of those in the end of the tube, left hand thread one end, right hand thread the other. Weld those bushes in, we've got the half nuts for locking it, and that is our adjustable arm. So we'll make two of those with the same, well actually I'm going to make it very slightly shorter than that because we want to pull the bottom of the wheel in to get the, the camber out. So that will sort that. Um, we then need to make uh, some bolts. So I've got some hex bar. Um, because obviously I've had to cut these out of the car so we can't reuse those. So I'll make some M14 bolts to go through um, the inner end and the outer end uh, which goes into this taper in the arm is a little bit more tricky. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to make a threaded adapter. So it'll have a, a thread on there, um, it'll go into the taper, it'll sit on a seat and it'll have a cone shape. Uh, and then that will go up against the rose joint with a reverse cone on that side and a nut and that will allow the rose joint to move about um, and that will allow us to pivot on both ends. So there's a little bit of um, lathe work, you can see I've already cut these. So first job I'm going to do actually I'm going to weld these bushes into here to get those done um, and then while they're cooling down I need to fire up the CNC lathe because I've got the two outer bolts to make the two inner bolts to make and I need to make a bunch of thick washers to replace these um, um, eccentric washers that are used for the standard adjustment because I've had to cut two of them out of the car um, to get them off so I can't reuse those and they're off center. Um, I'm going to make them uh, centered so it doesn't matter which orientation the washer's in um, and we're going to use the left and right hand thread for the adjustment. So that's it, a bit of bolt making and a bit of lathe work now. Fire up the CNC so I've got these welded. I've done my drawings here. So these are the bolts we need to make. This is the stepped bolt that's going to go where the taper goes in the arm. So this part goes through the arm. There's the taper for the rose joint. And this is the M14 thread that's going to go through the um, uh, through the rose joint there. Uh, so, bar stock in the lathe. Let's do some programming. So after a lot of cups of tea and machining, we have our two adjustable arms, the M14 bolts for the inner end, the lock nuts that fit those, four taper spacers to go against the rose joints and four 5mm thick washers. 
our two special bolts that go where the suspension taper joint goes taper washers for those lock nuts and the original m12 nuts so first job is to assemble up the rear lower arms which were on previously but i'm going to shorten these to take the camber out two millimeter pitch thread two turns in that shortens the arm four millimeters we'll try that so in goes the bolt thick washer and you can see the taper spacers give that a tap through then we can put the other thick washer on to center the bolt on the front side of that stick the lock nut on and then we can tighten everything up and that arm is done ready for the front one first job on the front one we'll put our special machine bolt into the hub at the front there it goes through m12 then goes through there with the original nut on we can then put the outer end of our new tie rod in there track rod tie rod camber rod does it all so rod goes on and then it has the taper washer and then m14 lock nut that all went together very nicely we'll put the inner end on loose so these are our M14 bolts and again a big spacer washer that we made to allow the rose joint to move freely. Push that bolt there through the rose joint. Another thick taper washer on the outside of that. Push the bolt through. And then we have our thick M5 washer on the outside which centers the bolt in the slot that's there as standard. And we can put the lock nut on and then we've got everything loosely assembled there simple job now tighten everything up That's those done get that one locked up on the outside and you can see here as I turn the rod you can see the toe changing on that arm all good well there we are we've got the arms on um, the front and rear so obviously the the um, rear the rear rear lower ones were already adjustable we've done that a while ago um, so the front ones are on and I put the new washers on the rear ones because it was a nicer job than the previous ones um, so we've got to do an alignment so question how do you do alignment on the cam the camber and the toe on the rear of the car on a sloping gravel driveway with no alignment gear here's how first job put the wheels on Once we've got the wheels on, we need to set ourselves up with somewhere level in order to do these adjustments. And these concrete paving slabs make a good pseudo flatbed for setting the car up. So first job, stick a couple of these, one under each rear wheel. We get a two meter spirit level and I can measure it front to back then to make sure that's somewhere near and I can measure it across the rear. And it turns out here we're not quite right with one slab on each side, but I knew that. So it's a case of using other concrete slabs and bits of wood until we get that spirit level so it sits level across the driveway. And there we are, two slabs one side, one and some wood on the other and we've got ourselves a flatbed. Next job, we can drop the car down onto our new created flatbed. And this allows us to look and make sure the body of the car is level. So we do it with a spirit level across the boot lip 
and also measuring the wheel arches to the ground. And sure enough, it was not the same on both sides. So off the wheel comes again and all we do is we adjust the height of the shock absorber on one side, whichever way we want to adjust. On this side it was about 10 millimeters too high. Bearing in mind that we'd never had a corner weighted or set this car up before. So wind the nut up then we can screw the uh, threaded adjuster down into the bottom half of the shock. Do that a couple of times up and down, keep measuring it until we get both sides of the car level, wheel arches to ground and the spirit level across the boot. It takes a couple of goes to do this usually but it's worth doing so at least we know the car is pretty much sat flat on its feet on the flat ground that we've created. Well, there we are, I've got the car level and obviously we set the ground up level and I've leveled the car up so we've got the right height from the, the mud guard edge to the ground here and I've put the spirit level on the boot to make sure and the reason I've put these rims on is they have a nice flat surface here so I can put my angle gauge against it and every time I adjust the camber or the toe on the rear wheels it's going to mess the other one up that I haven't adjusted so this is just a case of working your way in until you find out where you want to be. So I just lay the angle gauge on there and we'll spin this little fella around until our bubbles lined up and see what we've got. So it's got one and a half degrees in so I need to pull the bottom of the wheel inwards. So once we've got the initial camber measurement it's time to set up for the tracking and this involves some string. There's a few different ways of doing this but the usual way that I use very simply is to measure the track width front and rear and then you can lay string down over the outsides of the tyres around the car and you space, well usually the front's narrower, space the front off 20mm in this case with wooden blocks and then you can measure the distance with the steel rule on the front wheels to make sure that the, they're actually set straight, that you've got the steering straight. That's okay, those measurements are the same. We've got the same wooden blocks in the front so they're parallel, that's good. We can then go to the rear and we can measure where we've got a gap front or rear with a string. That's 18mm at the front and the string is touching at the rear so we have a lot of toe in on this side. And on the other side the string is touching both and that means that we actually have a little bit of toe out. So you can simply pull the string off the tyre at the rear until it just comes off at the front and then the gap that you've got at the rear is your toe out. And that's four mil out. So you can see how we measured it up there. We've got the string, so the string's parallel. Um, I know the track on this car is 40 mil narrower at the front than the rear. So I've put those 20 mil wooden spacer blocks in the front, one each side. I know the front tracking's okay, because I did that the other day. Um, so we can look at the string on the rear. And as you can see, we're 18 mil toe in on that side. And this side has there about four mil toe out. Um, and ideally I want them both parallel and we've got uh, one and a half degrees of camber on this side and half on the other. So let's do some adjustments now. So it's off with the wheels again. You take wheels on and off quite a lot when you don't have a ramp to do this. We need to adjust both lower arms. So. I've already disconnected the anti-roll bar, take the outer end of the rear arm off and screw that in. I'm going to guess that we need two turns. There we are, bolt it back up again and that's the rear arm adjusted and we'll see how much difference that's made. on the front arm this has a rose joint inner and outer end so if I go one and a half turns on the rod that is three turns total and remember we did two on the back this was towed out so it needed a bit more on the front to pull the front in
think that was a pretty good guess. That looks like zero to me. Is that with Dale? So just looking at the tracking, what I want is you can see the string on the back of the tyre here, it's touching on that lip, and at the front here there's about a one millimetre gap. That's perfect, one millimetre in on there, and we can see the string line running down the car. That's nice. Same process on the other side, this had 18mm toe in, so it probably needs the front arm to be longer, rear arm to be shorter, and that'll take the camber out and it'll take the toe out. So here's the left hand side, I've adjusted that. So again on the string I've got like a one millimetre gap at the front, one millimetre toe in, perfect. Put our slant gauge on the rim, centre the bubble, and that's on zero. That's it, we're all good. I'll take the wheels off and reconnect the anti-roll bar double check all the bolts and that's it we've just done a string wheel alignment um, and adjusted the camber and the toe out of the rear wheels so that should even up our tyre wear and it should help our grip off the line as well which will be good that means faster 0 to 60s which is um, well that's always a good thing so that's it for this episode um, I'm not sure what we'll be doing next some other upgrades uh, but please join us. Thank you for subscribing. Welcome to the 500 or so new subscribers that we picked up over the last month or so. Um, welcome to the channel. We hope you enjoy the content. And um, yes, next time we might be out at Santa Pod because I think it's still running. Um, or if not, we'll be doing some more upgrades to something um, which we're probably going to involve doing a rear mount radiator. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe. Please share the videos. All the information's there if anybody wants it. And uh, we will see you next time. Thank you for watching.